Bernie was a harpsichord maker and organ builder who worked for the Barberini family, and he features prominently in their archival records. The Cardinal's inventories, amongst other instruments, also mentions a chamber organ, a spinet and two harpsichords, one with three registers and another with a single register, all built by Giovanni Boni. This instrument, possibly the one mentioned, has a single eight-foot register strung in brass, which would have been the original material. It's wonderful to think that Frescobaldi may well have played this very instrument. So far we've examined the historical background to Frescobaldi's music and briefly touched on temperament. Another factor that governs interpretation is the practice of early fingering. Adriano Banchieri and Girolamo di Ruta, both contemporary composers and theorists, wrote treatises on fingering and although written before Frescobaldi's revolutionary toccatas hit the shops, they provide the only tangible methods for study. Banchieri advised that the longer digit should cross over the shorter. If I play a scale of C major, it's preferable than the method favoured by De Ruta, who advocates passing the shorter digit over the longer for left hand passages. rather uncomfortable. There were exceptions, of course, where accidentals were required, but fundamentally that was the idea. Thumbs were certainly used where appropriate, but not as frequently as in modern fingering. Running thirds were generally played with two and four, and six with two and five. The use of early fingering encourages the performer to think in smaller units, which in turn has a direct consequence on phrasing and articulation. As most theorists of the time agree that the hand should be held cupped over the keys, phrasing of a continuous quaver or semi-quaver passage quite naturally produces a lightly slurred articulation by using successive pairs of fingers. Take, for instance, this brief passage from Toccata Ottava, which, if I play with normal fingering, will sound very fluent. Now the same passage with Banchieri's method. Not as fluent, but that's not really the point. In this system, phrases are awarded greater respect with clearer and more distinct contours, and in many instances, highlights dissonances with greater intensity. This is really only the tip of the iceberg, but it does give you a little idea of how important ancient systems are. To end, I'm going to play the whole of Toccata Nona. Its thematic content seems to draw inspiration from that wonderful Caccini madrigal, Amarilli Mia Bella, which has this opening motive.